Okay. So I'm reminding everyone that this talk is recorded <laughs> and it will be posted to our public YouTube channel. Um, so Catherine has worked in the book arts for more than 20 years and as a book artist since 2004. Her works have won multiple awards and are held in more than 60 public collections around the world. She maintains a website with a bi-weekly blog post, some of which include instructions for paper projects, including DIY artist books. Um, so I'm going to ask everybody to uh, keep themselves muted while she's speaking and then put your questions in the chat. So we'll have time for those at the end. And then if you also want to ask about a specific piece that's part of the presentation, she's uh, Catherine's put numbers on them. So if you can put that in your question, then it's easy to navigate back there. So that is my spiel and I will um, hand it over to Catherine. Okay. Uh, I was a little surprised when I was asked to talk about this because it's not something I think about regularly. I just do it. Um, and if I wasn't going to show you pictures, they, I could probably talk about this in five minutes, but I have filled 200 frames with pictures and approximately, so there's lots of stuff to look at. I'd like to start by introducing, sorry, sorry, back, my husband, who is uh, not only the gardener, uh, cutter of hay for donkeys, half the cook and bottle washer in the house. He is the chief tech support and the copy editor and proofreader for the blog. So a lot of this would not happen without his help. I need to introduce a little bit of my background before I started the blog. I've always liked stars and I've always liked playing with paper. I've done um, alphabet books based on stars. And I've done altered books based on stars. Uh, this is a Life Nature Library copy of the universe. And I've turned seven of these into things that look like this. So lots, the entire text block folded into stars. I did seven versions of it. And then I did an eighth final one, which belongs to the University of Saskatchewan, uh, which is just a little box made out of and filled with the leftover stars from the seven other copies. I discovered the Chinese lucky star in about 2008, and I used it for a piece for an exhibition. I turned this book into this. Um, all the stars used in the piece, the lucky stars and the ones stuck on are from the text block of the book. The stars were strung on a continuous string. So in theory, you could pull out the whole contents of the tube as one continuous piece. I liked folding lucky stars. Um, this is a jar, gallon jar full of lucky stars made out of magazine strips of magazine pages. And they were used for this series. This is the first iteration of what I call Thank Your Lucky Stars. It's a prescription for people who have more than they probably need and aren't grateful for it and should be. And I'm used to folding or making multiples, like thousands of multiples. This is a rope made from a library sized dictionary, it was called language barrier. And there are 38,000 approximately beads made out of paper in this piece. It's a rope 22 meters long. <clears throat> so the blog, why and how? I decided I wanted to do a project with the luck Chinese lucky stars. They're also known as wishing stars. And I envisioned um, a labyrinth made out of thousands and thousands of folded stars, each with a wish inside it, written out on the strip of paper that it was folded from. So I started a blog. I first started a website and the wishing star project, as you can see, is the second thing in the menu. And if you went to the Wishing Star page, you got information about the project and a link which would take you to this page, which was where you could leave your wish anonymously. I got at the other end, with the help of a friend from the university and, and um, a server, I got a thing that said date and wish. And so the wishes was, were completely anonymous. 
I had read on the web that the best way to get traffic to a blog to a website was to have a blog. So I started a blog. And this is my first post. And it was about my first artist book. I wrote posts about the, the project. So this is the first update on the Wishing Star project, as it was called at that point. Sorry, back there. And I did progress reports. And the blog for the first two years and four months was intermittently posts about the Wishing Star project. About a month in, I was trying to drive more traffic to the to the blog and to the website because um, things were pretty slow, as many things are when you start this kind of thing. I wasn't instantly famous. Uh, I started a Friday night flick as well, which is part of the series on the... Um, so it went with the blog, but it was a separate thing that happened on Fridays. And I posted things that were of interest that were sort of blog um, related to book, book arts or things that I just found fascinating. So this is 34 days in. That's, how, that's what 169 wishes look like. Uh, this was my first post on instructional post. Uh, it's about how to back paper or cloth. And it's from the Japanese book binding Kujiro Ikigami was where I had learned it. More updates, more stars. This was my second instructional post and this one was surprisingly successful. I talked about it because I had taught people how to make this at a workshop in Toronto. And it has remained one of my all time most successful blog posts. It gets lots of hits still. This was my first book uh, giveaway. This is a DIY version of one of my artist's books. It's a miniaturized version and it can be made out of two pieces of paper. And I wasn't getting a lot of wishes. I was getting some, but people didn't seem to be passing the link around. So I made a little poster. I took some of them posters to Toronto and left them in galleries there. I uh, put the posters in a couple of places in Saskatoon, just hoping to drive a little more traffic. What I did find was that I could have avoided the whole thing, the blog and the website, because there are wishing sites online. This is, this is one of the wishing sites that actually shows you what other people have wish, wished. So I started collecting wishes off this kind of site on the internet. That way I was able to get a lot more wishes. And so this is the point at which I have six months in, I've collected five and a half gallons of stars. I posted about shows that I was in. This is a joint show with another artist here in Saskatoon. I posted about things that I collected, like my collection of signs. I posted about exhibitions I saw. Uh, this one was in actually in Oxford at the Bodleian Libraries. <laughs> I posted about work I was doing. That one was completed and was included in an exhibition. And I posted about the Star Project. This was the first anniversary of the blog and I gave away a little star book that was designed in memory of Herman Zapf. Um, it folds into, it's a flat folds into an accordion, but you can also open it and by reversing some of the folds, you can slot it together as a star. So again, the star theme. More stars. This was the first test. This is about halfway through uh, the folding of stars. And I did a test in a school gymnasium with the help of a friend. And this is Another giveaway, this was a book that I had done for um, a We Love Your Books online exhibition. So I gave away um, a do-it-yourself version to my readers. And I wrote a post about why I use Pinterest. Pinterest is actually the major driver of hits on my blog. Um, I probably, it's not, it's not the, it's the single leading source of, of hits. Uh, people use Pinterest as a visual search engine, and 
because uh, this, this was before uh, Google had a visual search. And you can see for the year summary for 2015, which was into the second year of the blog, 777 of my views had come from Pinterest. I wrote about where I live. So, and I wrote about funny things in local weather forecasts. How can you resist posting something about alert for the city of Saskatoon that says winter is coming? I wrote about books in my bookbinding collection. Um, I have quite an extensive collection of book arts um, reference materials, and this is the oldest one in my collection. I wrote about the stars. I introduced my lovely assistant, Kamuri. She's actually a major part of our lives, so she get got onto the blog. Uh, this was the first project for my readers do-it-yourself artist book that was created specifically for the blog, not based on anything that I have done before. And it's a book in the shape of a wedge of pie. And this is another one specifically done for the blog. Um, it's a, a book structure that I invented. I don't show it here, but it's a, a, a structure that's creates a book where you can read the text and then you have a double fold that you can open to see the image. So the image is hidden until you open it. And more stars. And the cat. This was the second anniversary of the blog. So I've been doing this for two years at this point. And um, this becomes a tradition. Uh, Tanabata, which is a Japanese festival that happens on the seventh day of the seventh month is the official birthday of the blog. So on Tanabata, I post a star project. And this was again, this was a DIY artist book specifically created for the blog. Sometimes I shared things that were parts of another project I was working on. So I just shared that. I also shared um, other people's work. Um, I had been meeting people because I was blogging. I was meeting on through the internet. I was meeting other book artists. In this case, this is one of the people I've actually met in person as well, Louise Laverno. Uh, and this is her City Shield series. Um, I began to get questions on the blog about things that I posted uh, that I hadn't given instructions for. And the reader wanted to know how did how this she wanted a better picture to see how the the band on the book was made. So I posted this and I thought if one person has asked about this, perhaps other people would be interested in it as well. So I posted instructions for how to make this interlocked band. And to my amazement, it it has become the second most popular post that I've ever made. And we come to the end of the Wishing Star project. Um, I folded, by the time I'd finished, I'd folded, I think, about 120,000 stars. And the finished piece is called The Persistence of Hope. Um, there's the notification that it's closing down. I had an exhibition at a gallery in a local mall and was able to get an open space in an empty uh, store rental space during the period that my exhibition was on so that I could install these stars in a labyrinth that people could walk in. This is the initial installation. And this is where how I modified it to make it the the sharper corners were less friendly, so I made it a little more friendly as I was in. I was in the mall twice a week with the labyrinth and showing people how to fold stars, uh, taking wishes, and just generally talking about the project. So another detail of the stars. Um, here's some people talking to me or listening to me. I'm going to take a little break from talking here and let you read the next few slides.
And here's the Wishing Star project all packed up again. Uh, it now lives in my studio with a whole bunch of stuff piled on top of it. If you know of anybody who'd like to have a star labyrinth installed and can afford to fly me and the, and the stars there, I'd be happy to do it again. That December, I continued posting, even though the project was finished. I posted uh, another do-it-yourself version of one of my editioned artist books, a cookie recipe. I make these cookies every December for a friend of mine. A brand new project, do-it-yourself accordion, Christmas-themed accordion. And two do-it-yourself versions of books that I had made originally for a cabbage book swap locally. One of them's just written out, the inchworm lyrics written out on tape measure. Why did I continue? The project was finished. Um, the motivation for the initial start of the, the website and the blog was gone. Why keep on? Habit, for one reason. Um, that's This is a, an example of my posting activity. You can see that I was absolutely consistent. Uh, this means I have fewer official followers because people know I'm predictable, but it, it became part of my routine. I was doing this twice a week, every week, and I'd been doing it for almost two and a half years. It's they say it takes three months to make a habit. I was well past that point. I also was not, it was not a terrifically onerous thing. My posts don't require a lot of writing. They're image heavy and um, I take pictures regularly anyway. So it was not that big a deal. And I had people who were coming back consistently. I didn't, I, I developed a, a sense of obligation to my regular readership, even though they was still fairly small in number. There are several benefits that I get directly from having the blog. Uh, when I went to art school, I was, I went, uh, took fine art and I also studied commercial art. Um, Documentation of process was not a big thing. Uh, now that art schools are all turned into universities and they have to pretend that this is an academic subject, uh, documentation and artist statements have become part of the training. And um, it, it wasn't the case when I was a student and wasn't part of my regular routine. However, it's nice to have the documentation of process and sometimes galleries want it. So I started using the blog as a way of documenting process. So this is the start of a piece. And these are some of the components being made. You can see I'm collecting them. There were five copies of this book um, made. Here's a layout of the pieces being sewn together, the pockets. And this is the finished piece. It's called Finding a Way. And that's the front with all the little insertions either in or on. And there's the back showing the stitching more clearly. Um, I also document, use the documentation to record things like mechanism. This was a move from a movable book I did as a collaboration with another artist, a printmaker. And these flowers were movable. So this is the mechanism used to collapse or expand the flowers. And there's the fi final installation with the flowers spread out. And there's from a catalog, the final book called I Love My Love from the Children's Rhyme. This is a one-off. One uh, it was a huge amount of work. <laughs> I also use the blog as a, pro as a project file. So things that I've shared and things that I've made to that where I've done a PDF, they're all there um, in one place. I have them on my computer as well, but they're in a variety of different places on the computer for a number of different reasons. 
Um, this is a handy way of keeping them together. So I have easy access to any PDF that I have created because sometimes I forget how I've done something. The PDF has a date on it so I can link back directly to the blog post with the instructions because I don't always remember how I made something. Sharing. Sharing is a really important part of the blog. Um, I live a fairly isolated life, um, it, which became more significant when I was diagnosed with re rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, the drugs that I'm on um, suppress my immune system. So I am more susceptible to contagious diseases than other people and more likely to have a bad outcome. It's a way of sharing my new work. These slides are not all of new work, but they were new when I was posting them. It's like having my own exhibition space. Um, I don't have to rely on getting these things into exhibitions. I can show them on my blog and on my website. And posting them on the blog is nice because I can actually talk more about why and how. My work, <clears throat> because I'm interested in paper engineering, my work doesn't always look like books. <laughs> um, sometimes much less so than others. I can post about things that I'm interested in. I can post about books in my book collection. I can post about talks or exhibitions that are happening elsewhere. I can post about other artists, book artists work that I'm interested in or have collected myself. I can post about processes that I've learned to do. Um, this was an article about, it was written originally for a craft magazine, but it, I reposted it on my blog. It was about the, uh, the joys of making paper out of horse manure. You don't use the fresh. <laughs> I could post about things that happened to work. Um, this was the piece that toured for a year and it was surprisingly given the fragility of the piece because this is little squares of paper cut paper sewn together uh, it survived remarkably well but it did require repairs at the end so i could post about the repairing which is also teaching because it shows you how i did it editioning um, i get bored with some processes fairly quickly so the blog is a way of sharing editions of books so that other people can actually make their own copy and I don't have to make it. I'm much more interested in the creation process, in the developing the idea, developing the structure and creating maybe a few copies. I had started, when I started doing artist books, I used to do editions of about two dozen and I had gradually been cutting back to editions of maybe six. So this little book has been, if even if half the people who made these books, who downloaded them, made them, it's still significantly more copies out in the world than I would have ever made myself. It's a way of sharing paper projects that are not specifically book related. Um, I'm interested, as I said, in paper engineering. So I, it's nice to set myself a brief for specific occasions like holidays or uh, because I've become interested in structure, I can create posts and projects that are not specifically book related. This is a little slider card. Um, I like flexagons, so I have posted a number of flexagons over the year. This is actually one from another source. It's not my own original design. 
Uh, this is an original one. Uh, I'm fascinated by the square flexagon. So the tetraflexagon. I could also post about useful things that I have invented. <laughs> I, I needed a, a sheath for a little pair of scissors so that I could take it tra traveling. And I didn't want the point of the scissors going through what it was held in. So I made a little blunt tip sheath and I thought other people might like find it useful. Uh, during COVID, there were a lot of people who were living in lockdown circumstances during holiday seasons with children in the house. So I thought um, Halloween when children couldn't go out and would need something to do. I This is a, a version of a bing, bingo game that the family could play. Um, and this is another, it's just a decorative object. It's another paper engineering project. As is this, this is the, this is the basis for a number of other structures, this one. Friday night flicks. The Friday night flicks were a way of sharing other people's work or projects. So they covered a variety of book related topics. Um, introducing book binders from around the world um, and their work. Introducing illustrators who I liked. And looking for these was actually fun because I would go and actually search for illustrators and I found a number of people that whose work I wouldn't have seen otherwise and who might be new to the people I was showing it to. Um, I'm interested in type design so that was one of the areas of interest of uh, that I focused on. I've also focused on um, stop motion animation because I really interested in that. Uh, unfortunately this keeps happening um, there are a number of reasons that videos disappear. One is that it turns out that the person who posted it didn't actually own the rights to it. The other reason is that people close their accounts and or they remove the video uh, for various reasons. And I'm thinking, in fact, because this happens particularly to the Friday Night Flicks, um, I'm thinking about discontinuing it. It's never been, had as many uh, people interested in it as the main blog. So I may just drop this in the future. Teaching. Teaching is a really important part of what I do. Uh, when I was a small child, I used to force my sister to play school. Um, my mother was a teacher, so I was modeling her. But um, I really like explaining things to people, and apparently I'm fairly good at it. Um, I've been complimented on the blog on the fact that I write intelligible instructions. That would be with David's help, because he co copy edits, and if he doesn't understand what I've written, it gets changed. Um, often the posts are about process, so teaching someone how to make something with the various steps. But I also try to show how you can move from one thing to another. Um, it's it's not an overt sort of teaching. It's a maybe semi-conscious or subconscious kind of teaching where I start with a structure and then follow through playing with it and experimenting and how it develop, can develop into different forms. So this, this all started with a, a Wendy Feldberg post on Instagram. Um, I was intrigued by the structure that she was using and played with it for several weeks. And this is a, a final book based on the structure that I started with from Wendy Feldberg, but taken in a completely new direction. And I also posted how to combine it uh, with a uh, Hedy Cow's Panorama book. The, I, I love the Hedy Cow Panorama. And I've developed a format where you can lock the, the units together. So it stays in a flat pan, actually stays in a flat panorama when it's displayed. And this is a, a combination of that structure with the, the folded unit structure that I had learned from a Wendy's post. So there's a finished book made with that structure. And to make it, make it go even further, uh, made a 
version of this. So it shows that you can be taken into a carousel format, locked into a circle. I also get sidetracked by things that I find on the internet and I post about that. I saw these images of a Chinese thread book or a couple of Chinese thread books that had this fold on the top pocket. And I wanted to know how to make that fold. So I posted a series of blog posts about the search and the results. So, so this is similar, but not exactly right. And to make the posts more interesting for my readers, I showed how to make each of the stages of pockets in each of the posts. So the first post had the top pocket, a version of the top pocket with a different fold because I th this one uses a twist top box um, because I didn't know how to fold that star thing. <laughs> and I did eventually find a version of it in a in an online PDF of a Mei Yung Sung book, The Ch Art of Chinese Paper Folding. And I found a completely um, origami version, which I, I linked people, showed people and link, gave a link to. And this is my finished thread book. So if you followed through those posts, you could make your own Chinese thread book while I was in the process of searching for a flower fold. The advent calendars, the first, the first series of, of Christmas posts and giveaways that I did, um, immediately after finishing the, the Wishing Star project. I just did four, four giveaway posts um, that December, but the next year I did a post every day giving away instructions for something. I've always liked the idea of advent calendars. I was fascinated by them as a child. They were not part of my household uh, history, but I had neighbors who were German who had advent calendars every year who you get to open the little door and you'd get a surprise. So I thought I would do a, a blog version. So there were instructions for a variety of things. The first year, the theme was star. So I wasn't limited to paper or book objects. I did bead things. I did um, applic paper applique. I did baking. <laughs> Second year, the theme was enclosure. So instead of a shape, I chose a structure. And this was actually a teaching opportunity as well. There is a logical sequence in the progression through the kind of folds that are used to make the objects that I'm posting about. So all of these things are could be considered book related. They could either be included in a book or in the case of the final one, um, used to enclose a book. 2019, I went back to shape as the theme and this time it was square. So there's the first three posts. Uh, but it included things like how to use how to use a furashiki, which is a square Jap Japanese square of cloth that's used to wrap gifts. Um, there was square baking, square or Christmas ornaments made from squares, and a structure that could be a book made from squares and from um, other shapes as well. Oh, COVID Christmas. Um, I was very aware of the fact that people were in isolation and frequently in isolation with small children in the house who they were trying to keep amused. So because I have spent much of my life in relative isolation, I was conscious of the need for people to be able to amuse themselves. And spending your life watching television or on the internet is not really healthy. And I wanted to give people the opportunity to make things and amuse themselves. I started with a star that can be folded out of just about anything. And I had no idea what that would do. <laughs> it caused an absolutely amazing spike in my stats. I got 901 views in one day because of this star. 
people, it obviously struck a chord with people who were in lockdown. Um, there were more stars. This is one of my favorite folded stars. Everything in this uh, series of Advent posts was intended to be made out of something that you probably had in your house um, to begin with, so that you wouldn't have to try and go out to get anything to make these things. Uh, I tried to include things like this is a book that is actually a magic trick, so it would amuse children. And I included games for the first time. So there are a number of games you could print. You could either print out or draw on a piece of cardstock yourself and play with kids. 2021, there were still quite a few people in lockdown around the world this Christmas, but it wasn't as critical and people had found ways to cope um, for the most part. So I chose uh, simple books as the theme. These were so people could make these themselves. Most of them were non-adhesive, but they not all. <clears throat> and there's the, the first. There are a lot of different ways to fold an accordion, many of them bad. So I talked about that in two of the posts and gave away, again, this, this one was a repeat. Some of these posts are repeats from earlier blog posts. This is an art do-it-yourself artist book version of uh, one of my earlier artist books. I talked about playing with structure, so there are a lot of ways you can alter an accordion to make it more interesting. I mean, I love accordion books to begin with, but you can play with the structure as well. And I gave away more do-it-yourself artist books. This is a, a, a do-it-yourself version of one of my art, early artist books hand-lettered in the original. And this was a little teaching experiment, teaching people how to make a drum leaf binding in a little miniature book that they could use for reading on Christmas Eve. Last year was the circle. This one was harder. <laughs> uh, circles don't lend themselves to the book arts as readily as some of the other things do or to paper engineering they're more complicated you need a template of some sort and to fill all the posts i also moved the idea of circles so that it included things like spirals this is a an interesting spiral book structure created by um a book artist in england and she had she gave me permission to post instructions Um, because I'm interested in animation, I've I've always liked thaumatropes. So this is a seasonally appropriate set of thaumatropes that you could make. Ed Hutchings had sent me a copy of a book made by Edip Aji, which has a spiral structure. The pages are attached in a spiral and I figured out how it was made and posted instructions on how to make it. I also posted things that could be used as Christmas ornaments. This is all made from circles or expanded circles. And I did another version of my pie book, but this time it's, it's a cake. And I created an entirely new book called Paper Moon, which only exists as a, a do-it-yourself edition. There's only one copy made by me, the rest are made by other people. And there was food. There's always food in Christmas. And pretty much finished the year with a perpetual calendar, which is a structure that could be used as a book. It, it involves volvels, which are something that are, can be included in a book. The future. I'm still posting. Um, I get quite a few views on the blog now. And the top post is actually a version of a book. That interlocked band is right up there as the second post of over the full, all the time I've been posting. Um, the Chinese thread book posts are really popular and, and a consistent draw. Um, they've been really popular recently, and I think that may be because Paula Beardle Creek is doing a series of uh, workshops on them. 
So they may have come back to sort of the forefront. Pinterest is still the major driver for people finding things on my blog. And I still post, um, when I when I do a new instruction post, I, I always make sure to pin it both on my instruction page on Pinterest and on whatever, if, if it's a, an unusual binding, I'll pin it on that board as well. Um, if I if I decide my stats have been a little flat and I want to have some fun, I do what I call release the librarians. Um, I'll post if I've got an instructional post, I will um, put the link on the book arts list and um, watch the librarians roll in. They're not all librarians, but I think of it as releasing the librarians. That star was my, the paper star made out of newsprint was my best view ever, about 901. But I get, um, because I post consistently, the 20% of all my views are on Sunday after I post. Pinterest is also the prime driver of passing information on. People repost my, my pins um, and people come to my blog secondarily via the Pinterest. Also, I post uh, blog posts on Tumblr and LinkedIn. And so I, those, those get reposted there. Uh, I mentioned the Friday night flicks disappearing. Uh, just a word of warning, if if something happens and for some reason I don't maintain my website, there's a distinct possibility that all the blog posts will remain, but the images will disappear. And this is true not only of my blog, but of other people's. If you find a set of instructions on the internet that you want to keep, don't just pin it, don't just save the link, you want to download the PDF if there is one, and you want to save the instructions by, you can copy and paste the, the text into a document. Um, you can use text edit, you can use pages, you can use Word. The images won't transfer. You'll have to take a screenshot and insert that into your text. If you really want to save something, I highly recommend doing this because things disappear. And it can be very frustrating if you have a PDF and no instructions and you can't remember what the finished object looked like. Uh, stats are funny things. Um, I get a great deal of pleasure. This morning when I got up, there were 79 views from Switzerland. That means that in Switzerland, somebody had found my blog and was going through it. And I love to think about the idea of somebody being excited about finding my work and finding the things that I share. United States is still my primary source of viewers, but I get um, quite a wide distribution. I have, um, I have Google Translate right up at the top right-hand side of my blog so that people can follow the instructions in another language. I try to write the instructions in as simple a form as possible so that they don't get too garbled when translated by Google Translate. If you, oh, sorry, I should stay on here. Um, one of the drivers when I was first posting that was really exciting was watching this map fill in the all-time views. And it took until two years ago to get Greenland. I don't expect to fill in the remains of Africa anytime soon, but I keep eyeing that blank set of islands up in the north called Svalbard or Spitsbergen. So if you happen to be going on a holiday to Svalbard or you know somebody who is, would you please have them look at my blog so I can fill in those islands in pink? Um, sharing is the primary reason for maintaining the blog. And that's it. Thank you. That was amazing. <laughs>
Um, so I'm going to ask, we, we ha actually have a relatively small group. So if anybody wants to just ask a question, that's fine too. Um, but also I will take a look at the chat and um, if anybody's got any questions, we're, we'd be happy to hear them. I, we do have one comment saying, I love Friday night flicks and that was seconded. So you've got two <laughs> fans. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll keep it going. <laughs> For you two, whoever you are. <laughs> Todd and Stacy are both advocating no, for keeping it. <laughs> it's it's not Todd, it's Amy. Oh. But oh, hi. Uh, I'm using Todd's account. So um I'm I'm uh, the president of the Ottawa Valley chapter mm. for Cabot. So um maybe I'll just comment. I, I don't know how I found your your blog, but um you know, I get I get your emails every Friday night and I look forward to the Friday night flicks. I you know, sometimes when I'm working over lunch hour I might go back and 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 look at them and I've spent lots of time on your blog and I'm so inspired by all the, the things that you share and I hope to one day actually have some more time to kind of explore making some of the things that you've posted. So um this is a tremendous effort and um I would say just on, for me, very, very, very much appreciated. It's it's amazing. Well, thank you. And maybe I'll keep the Friday night flicks, <laughs> but you watch them soon because apparently they disappear. So, <laughs> yeah, I do usually watch them within the week or you know, but uh, that should be safe. A nice, a nice little break when I when I have a bit of you know five or ten minutes here and I. I want to take my mind away from something and just and and I've gone down the rabbit hole of many of the artists that you you've posted and thought oh that it's just so inspiring so no I, I really appreciate it okay I wanted to ask a question since I we're waiting for other folks um do you find that there are um ideas that you're driven to do because you know they'll make for good blog posts that you're sort of thinking, uh, oh, that's, I'm going to explore have, this because I think it will go well there. Or do you find uh, like it's. I have, I have no idea what's going to be a popular post. Uh, the, okay. the, the, the newspaper star absolutely floored me that so many right. people <laughs> are excited about that one. That one even got passed around on Facebook. I, uh, the, the interlock band closure I had no idea when I posted that. I posted it because one person had asked a question. She's about, here. <laughs> yes, yeah, seeing yeah. a seeing a clearer <laughs> view of the the image. Um, so I thought, well, if one person's interested, maybe more people will be. Mm -hmm. I think the posts that um, are most successful are generally ones that cross over out of the book arts field. They can, they can be book arts related, but they cross over into the general, more general craft field. Mm -hmm. um, but I have no idea when I write things, whether they'll be popular or not. I really don't have a clue. I have mm -hmm. no idea. And I don't try, based on my previous experience as a, as a weaver, I never try, I learned not to try and guess what the market would want. I made things that I was interested in making, okay. and that was more successful than trying to guess. Okay. Um, so I, I treat the blog the same way. I post what I'm interested in because otherwise it would be work. Um, right. right. I, I'd, like, I'd like to keep it at least a little bit fun. So for <laughs> me, uh, so I, I just post what I'm interested in and hope that other people will be interested in it too. Uh, okay, so we have a question from Diana. She says, when you're modeling an idea, what kind of paper do you use? Oh, I usually use copier paper to start with. Just cheap copier paper or sometimes newsprint. Uh, mm -hmm. Depends what the project is. If it's one of the paper engineering things that requires a little bit of structural strength, um, I use standard office supply uh, cards, uh, uh, cover stock. So the materials I start with are always cheap and readily available. And I tend to try and stick with that for the projects that are the do it yourself projects, mm -hmm. because I don't want to show people something that they could make for themselves and then tell them that they have to mail order expensive stuff from another country. 
Right. Um, I want I want to make things as accessible as possible. Excellent. Any other questions from the group? This is your chance, guys. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes I think people are kind of bowled over by all the ideas that come I, out. Yeah, of... I've just blasted yeah. their, their <laughs> brains with yeah. 200 They're images. They're like, so... wow. <laughs> you're, you're, allowed to, you're allowed to write questions on my contact page on the blog mm. if you think of something later <laughs> on the website. Sorry. Mm. Yeah, there do is you, a contact do you, page. Do you find that you get... I don't know if your blog allows comments at the bottom of the blog yes. uh, entry. Yeah. Do you find there's much activity there or? No, um, no, I get, I get comments periodically. I get likes, um, but it's my, my readership does not seem to be particularly chatty. Right. Excellent. Uh, unlike, unlike the cooking blogs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where, where, or the sewing blogs where there's like 400 <laughs> comments. <laughs> So even a post that's been really popular and had, as I say, like, you know, 900 views, you know, there'll be two comments. Right. Yeah. Not not a chatty group. Right. <laughs> Too busy making things, I think. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm thinking, are you, is everybody got their questions? They're full of, their brains are full. <laughs> we're all going to go and bump your Canada numbers. <laughs> anyway, I'm quite serious. If you do have a question, there's a mm -hmm. contact page on my website and you can ask me. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that everybody is happy. I'm not seeing any other questions coming out. Lots of thank yous from folks. I see, a, very I see a 13 on the chat, whatever that is. So there may be questions there. Are you looking at that? Yeah, yeah. I'm in the yeah. chat there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. So there's one more. Does Catherine remember what paper she used for the white flower top box? It had a slight texture to it. Oh, uh, that was that was um, um, a Japanese um, washi mm. for that, to get something thin enough that would take the, the folds crisp enough. And strong enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so lots of thank yous. I would like to thank you. This was super well, interesting. Thank you for really, inviting me. Yeah, this was uh, a lot of fun. And now I have to go look at a bunch of your blog entries that I just saw little pictures of. And now I'm going to go explore them more. <laughs> okay, my stats should be better today. <laughs> I know, I was going to say, so everybody go visit the blog and, you know, Canada, US, wherever you are in the world, go in, <laughs> bumper numbers. <laughs> And remember, if you go to Svalbard, please look at my blog from there. <laughs> Importantly. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everybody. This is great. Really enjoyable, Catherine. Thank, thank you for you. taking time to be with us. And uh, I will uh, post the recording and let everybody know once it's up on the public page. Um, and yeah. I'll probably put a link on my blog. <laughs> oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> okay. That's I'll wait great. till everybody's logging yeah, themselves out. Thank, thank, mm. thank you very much. That's very inspiring. I'm going to go back and look at everything again now. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> yeah, I saw like five thank things you. that I want to go back and look at tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. Okay. Did you notice some of them? That's why I put the posts up with the dates at the top. So if you're yeah. paying attention. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I just did one of those Chinese thread books and um, I, I, you know, try to I've been trying to sort of go back and do it a couple of times to remember so it's good to have you know to know that that's there I can go kind of explore that and and do a few little experiments <laughs> okay that's great. it's a nice Thank structure you. to play with it is yeah okay well see you I'm in Ottawa so I I'm doubt we'll cross paths but thank you so much oh you never know you never know <laughs> I have I have cousins in Ottawa <laughs> Oh, well, you never know then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, take care. Thanks, bye. Okay, so we're officially at 8 o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and end stuff. And I'm going to stop the recording.